Let me show you what I was seeing in the charts last night when I gave my community three post at nighttime letting them know hey it's about ready to roll over and b if you want to have more crypto then right now even if you're not in profit on an altcoin that you recently bought you might want to potentially get sell 20 percent of those pokemon cards so that you have the tether holding and you can buy it down lower if this does indeed roll over so i gave three alerts last night when bitcoin is well above 44k let me show you what i was seeing in the charts uh, and before we get into that let me uh, actually show you the um the uh what i sent to them so last night, so it says yesterday, 9 p.m. up here where my cursor is. I don't know how well you can see that here. Yeah, you can probably see that, okay. Let them know, hey, in the end, suggesting, hey, in my case, I'm planning on skim selling 20% of all of each single Pokemon card that I do not have staked right now is going to be a winning strategy on my end to do that. And that's what I'm planning on doing. And I showed them a visual, hey, Skim selling because of this posturing is probably a great idea. It's at least going to go visit the revisit the lows, but it looks like on this chart it's going to go lower. And so I was warning everybody last night. And for my two higher tiers, I had made them a promise that never again would I miss the posturing in our ribbons. I developed ribbons here within the exclusive community, so you're not going to find you can find uh, trading view ribbons, but you can't find mine because mine are a little bit more special. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so I let the two higher tiers, I gave them a third post, let them know, I promised you I would never miss this uh, this happening in the ribbons ever again, and it's happening again. It's because I did miss that drop last time, and I did not warn the community uh, because Ethereum and uh, Cardano tricked me because uh, they were making all-time highs and doing really well. So I was convinced that this was not going to be a lower high, but my ribbons told me, dude, you need to sell. <laughs> so And it's happening again. So I gave out three... Um, three alerts last night when and again bitcoin was over 44k when i gave those alerts right so what was i seeing in the charts let's break this down here we go and in this uh, video you're going to see how low i think this will go so so some targets <clears throat> first off independent of all emas even though i have the daily 200 drawn in here I think that if I were a whale, I would like to drive pr price down exactly hit the lows or go a tiny bit below it and then move right back up in the range and start buying my Bitcoin and let let price continue to rip or maybe price continue to be boring, but above the weekly 21 EMA. I think that is one possibility, but that is definitely not what the charts are saying. The charts are saying this is going to go lower than that, but thinking like a whale, that is what I would try to do. So I'm trying to incorporate thinking like a whale into my chart analysis because the whales are clearly very clearly setting up uh, bull traps based off of traditional trading where you should be bullish. So this is traditional trading should be bearish. I think this could be a whale thing, just like this bull trap was breaking above this range. So that is one of my um, one of my top three most probables for downside movement somewhere fairly close to the recent low around, you know, just under 40K, uh, 39.5. It could go down to 39, 38.5, something like that. A small wick below or a wick above or right at like tag the same place somewhere on both sides of this line around around 39.5, a little higher, a little lower. That's my first guess. Is that my most probable guess? Uh, I I kind of want it to be, but the charts are definitely saying something else. All right. So what? why are the charts saying farther down? Well, take a look at this. Take off price. Whenever you get this cross, first off, that's very bad. This is a daily bearish cross. And you can see that the cross tried to undo itself and it failed. So which means if you had a low here, you need to go lower to regroup before you try this, uh, before the red line tries to get uh, up again. It's not just going to keep hugging this. Now, sometimes they hug when they flatten out. That could be what happens, and that would be revisiting the lows. So you could just get like a, a play where they both kind of converge and stay above the daily 200. That could happen. However, the chart is saying that you already closed candles below the daily 200, which is bad in and of itself. See these closures? You have this cross on top of it. You, Bitcoin tried to undo the cross, and now instead of failing this cross, right, it didn't get rejected by the 20, the, by the yellow line. It got above it, but it failed the attempt. Now it's getting flat out rejected by the red line. And so if you have, for example, let's just see weakness here. So strength, 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 weakness. Not so strong, even weaker, which means it's going to make a lower low than what this was. 
and probably i mean and the difference in this low and the next low it's going to make is probably similar from this low to this low probably going to be pretty similar folks um so let me draw a line showing you um let's just take a line from roughly here there tag it on this is suggesting 35k because this is even weaker this is a weaker attempt which means buy pressure is weaker so if buy pressure is weaker now than it was here, well, buy pressure is what held this up to not go much lower, right? And if you don't have that, this is going to make a new low. And this is suggesting 35K. So is 35K my main target? No, it is not. Um, but this is suggesting lower than this recent low significantly outside of my first guess. So my second best guess is that on a structural basis outside of EMAs, let me make sure that, yeah, I guess I'm recording perfectly. All right, perfect. Um, my second guess is to revisit somewhere down here. So these uh, recent lows, and you have previous support there. So there's a lot of stuff going on around 37.5. 37 to uh, 38K, there's a lot happening. So I could easily see price coming back down to that area, recovering, and then slowly getting back above the daily 200 and coming back into the previous range up here. I could see that happening. That would be my second guess. And that day, the daily would not close a candle below these candles. So, but it could wick below and significantly below, honestly. So let's check this out. So I would say my second best guess is a daily candle does not close below 38.2, but has a decent chance in that event wicking significantly below, even below these wicks. It could go down into the to, to the 37s. So I would say somewhere between 38 to 37 would be my second guess, but the closure here, right? So I'll make a box. Actually, I'll make a box here. See how these guesses uh, line up. So that's guess number two. Guess number one. I'll make these all different colors. How about that? All right, and for guess, and so this uh, guess number two, I believe aligns with the one hour EMAs having extremely similar posturings um, in previous price action. The one hour 10 with the 200, all right, I can even take off price so you can see this better. So going back before the big drop down to 29K, what you had here, so the red line is the one hour 10, the orange is the 200 EMA, okay? So that's what we're looking at here. And I see that, um, the one hour, uh, the 10, the red line, the 10 is bouncing on it, dips below, has a weak attempt to stay above, can't, then rejection, and then a big fall down. So what's happening now? Look, it fell below, the red falls below the orange, has it a weak attempt to stay above, comes down, gets rejected, tank. <laughs> So this is essentially going to be my third uh, option. That's going to be down at 33K. But, but there's another scenario where this happened as well. The same exact thing. So if these algorithms are running pretty similar stuff, you have the, the red come below, weakly get above, come back, get rejected, and do one, two, three drives down. Then you recover. So it looks pretty similar to this. And what's happening right now is the first rejection, right? And, but we're going to have two more waves down, and that guess, uh, this fractal, so I'm going to take a fractal of the price, even though price isn't on here. Um, I'm going to take it from the drop to when it recovers, something like that, and move this over, and I think that takes us down to my second guess. Because the EMAs um, on the one hour are saying whatever algorithms are being run on this, uh, it looks pretty similar to then. So, there you go. So it lines up with my box, maybe, a, you know, a further wick down, you know, wick or whatever. But I would say this box is my second guess. All right. And my first guess is the blue box. But that fractal aligns with my second guess, if you can see this. OK. All right. So. My third guess for where BTC price is going to go, and this is in the charts, right? So you have the very similar posturing where the one hour 10 EMA gets below, has a weak attempt to stay above, doesn't, gets rejected, kablam. Right. And if you take a fractal of this, um, actually, you'd have to take a fractal of the whole move uh, because these. Um, yep, 
these two moves are looking I mean whoever ran the algos here are running the same algos on a smaller time frame it's it's the same exact shape it's honestly kind of stupid um and very obvious I, I'm not for sure why this is uh happening this way but it, it looks pretty similar watch so I'm going to take a fractal of all that, but I have to shrink it because if those algos are the exact same algos, which it honestly looks like they're almost exactly the same, they're just running on a smaller time frame is what's happening. Something to this effect. And see how it takes us to be down to this line? So around the 33K mark. But if it came down here, just know that there's a CME gap at around 32, and that's a big one. So you would probably get a wick. If this were to play out, you'd probably get a wick to fill that in and come right back above 33 and then recover. So I'm going to say my third area is somewhere between, let's say, 33.5 and down all the way to 32. It's a bigger box, but I think when volatility and the sell-off happens, your, your, move, your wicks are going to be bigger. Um, so 33.5 down to 32. And I'll leave these boxes here to see how they pan out. But it looks extremely certain in the Bitcoin chart alone that one of these three boxes is going to be it. I guess it's possible that it could come up land in no man's land around 34 or something. Sometimes big dips, they do visit no man's land. So let's check out the volume profile to see, you know, if that might happen here. And what that would mean. I just had a uh, I just had a VIP show me how to make this smoother. All right, so let's go to the daily chart. Oh, don't do that. There we go. All right. So volume profile is saying, so it's not quite no man's land. That 34 area would be this support right here. And if it went down to true no man's land, it would just be filling this out and perhaps find support down at 33, a wick down there, but mostly visit no man's land. So this is really saying, I mean, if price wants to go to previous liquidity, that would actually align with the more bearish case. Um, there's not much hanging around here. Um, uh, no man's land would be a weird one. So that's not, that's why it's not my top guess. Uh, so I, I don't think my analysis is mi missing a whole bunch from the volume profile, which is what, how I use this. I, I make sure that my guesses seem to make sense roughly with previous liquidity or areas where liquidity might need to be filled in in order to make a base. So I think the guesses align pretty well. Now, what does this mean for your altcoins? Well, what um, I've been suggesting to my patrons is if you did hold Tether, because I was given the alert when Bitcoin was right here at 44.1 uh, and 44.2 and 44.4 and all that stuff, I was letting them know you might actually use a third of your Tether to try to pick up alts roughly. Um, so if Bitcoin falls from here about uh, 10%, that means your alts are going to fall about 20, 15 to 20%. So maybe of all the Tether that you skim sold, Use that, so call that your tether, right? Even though you might have had previous tether, whatever. But now you have tether because you, you skim sold. Uh, we as a community had the idea to do that. So take a third of that, or no, take that tether and take one third of it and plan to try to pick, put some limit buys in your altcoins roughly 15 to 20% deeper, which would align with this box being hit, okay? And this is all laid out for my community. They've been preparing for this ever since we started bouncing. I let them know. I think we're going to get rejected um, by my, and I even posted it on uh, Twitter as well, even though I guess this uh, downturn would happen if several days later. Um, but this is the, this is kind of what I've been planning for. Uh, not on this, not on Friday. I didn't expect it to happen on Friday. I thought the downturn happened Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. But anyway, levels are still the same. Concept is still the same. So uh, in a third of your tether, to account for this far of a dip on BTC. So go back to 44 or five or so. So if BTC drops 15%, your altcoins are gonna drop closer to 30. So somewhere between, you know, 25 to 
put in a chunk of limit buys for, for wherever your altcoins are now, about you know 30% less with another third of that tether that you now have. And the third third, the last third, perhaps uh, put in orders potentially 50 to 70% lower than your current price. Like if Bitcoin drops this hard, your altcoins are gonna drop a lot farther. Um, so it's probably gonna be a 50% drop, 45% drop. So I'm not sure 70% drop is gonna happen again in alts. That would mean Bitcoin makes new lows, which that could happen. But I think that might be the fourth most probable. I, I think a, a higher low is gonna be made here. Um, and as most of you know, I've been looking for a higher low for quite some time. So it just depends on where it decides to form. Like it could form a higher low down here. That's a legitimate higher low. And then uh, and then the trend can, you know, form some triangle and, and break out or or this might all be a trap and, you know, whales are trying to accumulate. Who knows? But this is what the charts are saying. These are my targets, right? doesn't matter why this has happened. It's just you're you're prepared for each of three. So since you don't know which one's happening, just spread your bets. Third here, third here, third here. And this one would be for the tether that you're holding, go to your altcoins and potentially try to put limit buys uh, 45 to 50% down from current price. So that's what we just covered um, um, as a community here recently, uh, what to do with the tether um, to get, because we don't know how low Bitcoin's gonna go. I would suggest, I personally have suggested um, a third, third and third to account for these three target areas. So uh, now you know what I was seeing in the charts to give those alerts well before the uh, this uh, this red day happened. And second, what um, I'm helping my community do in terms of, hey, if you're not comfortable buying back, you can just use percentages because Bitcoin really only has, you know, it has three major um, likely areas to hit and your altcoin should behave roughly um, in the same way on a percentage basis. But you have to expand. If Bitcoin falls 10%, your altcoin might fall 20. Um, and so you put a grain of salt in for each one. So let me show you something else that's really bad. Um, this actually might be uh, not quite so bad, but this has a chance of shaping up. Watch. So let me get rid of this. All right. So now we're looking at the 12 hour chart. This could go either way. And this is why I think revisiting um, the pre the recent low and then just recovering could easily happen because there are only two ways that this cross has played out recently. Right. So obviously, if it crosses, you can tank. <laughs> OK, it's pretty bad. And if you don't use the 12 hour chart on Bitcoin, you might want to start doing it. The other one is skim play. Get close. That's a skim. And this is a deep skim, right? It actually did skim under and recovered and went sideways for how, how much longer, which honestly is where I think what I think is going to happen. I, I think I think whales are really wanting this to look more bearish than it really is. But that's not what the chart is saying. I'm telling you that right now. I'm doing most of a whim. So even though my main guess, my favorite guess is this will be a deep skim play and we won't, you know, go down to 37K or even much lower than 40K, right? Even though that's my favorite guess, Bitcoin doesn't care what my favorite guess is. So I need to be prepared for things that are more, okay, the chart is telling me this. Well, you better be prepared for that and screw your guess, right? So instead of screwing my guess, I am essentially uh, taking a third of my tether and putting that towards my favorite guess and reserving two thirds for what the what the charts are telling me essentially is what I'm doing. Right. So this could just be a deep skin play where we go sideways for a month and a half. That's exactly what happened here. So put on price. This is before the big run up right from 10K up to 40K this. So these two areas of consolidation where it, it skimmed and skimmed. So one was a light skim, one was a deep skim. Those two consolidation periods allowed, I mean, it set the base for Bitcoin to fly up from 10K to uh, 40K. It was quite, you know, it was a monumental run and then it kept going, which it really shouldn't have kept going. So the other, you know, the other option is you can see here, there's not a whole lot of in between folks. Here was a fake out. It looks like you got a deep skin, you're going to recover and then it tanked. So you had a, you had one, but that's the coronavirus. It did both. It did a deep skim, looked like it recovered, and then just tanked. So I guess you can have a hybrid of those two, but in for the most part, if you cross, that's bad. So it's either you only have two options in this cross. Either one, you cross, and that's bad, or number two, you cross, and it's a skim. That is it. There's really nothing else that's going to happen. Skim, and then maybe consolidate, right? There really are other options in Bitcoin. You're not just gonna you're not just gonna skim and then fly. Right. So can we find a point where it skimmed and just started flying off? No. You can't. Now, it flies off after it consolidates under it and crosses above. Yes. But that's not the same thing. 
I mean, look, every time this crossed, bad, bad, bad. These were all the dead cat bounces in 2018. Nope, I guess 2017 did have one. It did skim, then fly. It did happen once, 2017. That was July. Actually, 2017 did it freaking twice. Hmm. But as we know, this run is not anything similar to 2017, but... I guess it is an option. It did happen. I didn't realize it happened twice in 2017. So here it skimmed. It did a deep skim and consolidation for a month or two. Yep, two months. So I guess it has happened, but usually it's skim then consolidate for quite a while. I mean, this is going to be like a. So it's happened twice, I guess this. So you did get a skim then a blast twice in 2017. I apologize. I don't remember those. I thought I had the Bitcoin chart mostly memorized on the on the daily and the and the 12 hour and the weekly. But um, I just recently started uh, liking the 12 hour. So I guess I didn't have that part memorized. Sorry. Um, so I guess you do have three options. I guess the third option is. You skim. Then blast. But honestly, I think that is by far the least likely. So really what we're looking at here is very bad or skim consolidate. Sorry to let you know that. Um, but if we can consolidate here, remember the last time it did that skim then consolidated, that was a monster blast, 10K to 40K with no stopping, no stopping at all, right? So this could be really good. It does, so there is silver lining here. And if this skim did a deep skim then consolidated, that means this box is roughly gonna, or the top of the box is gonna be hit. But a portion of this box is very likely gonna be hit on this downturn um, in that event. Okay, so there are a lot of ways that you can break this down, right? So looking at the daily EMAs, just to recap, um, you have a couple of potential bad scenarios, right? And they're, feed, they're cascading or feeding onto each other. So here you have the cro this bearish cross. It tried to undo itself, it failed. On top of, and so that's bearish in and of itself, on top of the daily 10, about ready to have a massively bearish cross to the downside. So that 21, the yellow and red crossing down could cascade this sell pressure into this crossing down, which could then create a big, a bunch of sell pressure down in the low 30s. That is what the chart is saying is very possibly going to happen. So just know that, uh, that like the, the chart looks horrible. It looks really bad right now, folks. Um, and uh, a few folks who took the same XRP long, almost at the exact bottom, uh, uh, I let them know, okay, I'm taking all profits now. I'm getting fully out of the trade when Bitcoin is still above 44K. So we caught, um, in the community, we, we caught this. So this downturn here, we caught XRP on a long. And then up here, when Bitcoin was hitting its daily 10, I said, okay, I'm getting fully out. I'm getting fully out. Um, and so we had a, we've had a couple good plays here. So really, since there are so many, you know, possibilities here, it's going to be hard to play this. Therefore, don't just, you know, if you are fortunate enough to be holding Tether, especially if you're not in the community, um, to have somebody letting you know, hey, it might be a good idea to hold some Tether Pokemon cards. Um, I'm not for sure what you, you could do besides join a community that gives you that information for the future. Um, but if you are holding Tether, I, I really do strongly recommend, you know, to the whole, you know, YouTube community um, <clears throat> who isn't necessarily part of the um, uh, Patreon Discord is that uh, have three different game plans for how you're going to pick up more crypto on this discount. All right. Because each of these could play out. And if you put all your eggs in this basket, trying to catch like a 20 percent or a 20 to 30 percent dip and it really comes down here, then you're missing out on a bunch of opportunity. Right. But if you use all your tether to only try to pick up your altcoins 50% lower and it actually only hits here and recovers, well, then you didn't buy anything at a discount unless you maybe uh, canceled all those orders and market sold on the way up. You could do that, too. But you didn't take advantage of catching the dip. Right. So that's why I'm thinking um, it might be strategic to do a third, third and third. For, so for no matter what happens, if it comes all the way down, well, at least a third of your money capitalized perfectly in here for your altcoins, right? If you're trying to pick up altcoins. So at least a third. It, it, it doesn't guarantee that you catch the right level, but it increases the probability that a large portion of your tether capitalizes perfectly on this down move, right? But that's sacrificing the idea that you have a chance of having 100% of your tether capitalized at the exact right level, right? So that's a gamble. But you're sacrificing your home run and you're going more for a single here. What is that? So a lot of people don't follow baseball. Um, I don't know how else to say that. Going for a big punch. So in boxing, right? Going for a nice jab 
instead of going for a knockout uppercut, right? So go for a few jabs instead of going for uh, one big uppercut because the chance of you missing an uppercut is pretty high. Uh, essentially, maybe that's one way uh, um, that maybe fighting's kind of universal. So hopefully that made sense. All right, so that's what I got for you today. I'm not going to look at any other altcoins because as I let my community know um, last night, um, right now you don't need to really look at Ethereum because look, rule of thumb, BTC does not always lead up, but it does always lead down. So you only need to be looking at Bitcoin right now, to be honest with you, in terms of trying to figure out how weak and how low your altcoins are going to go. Um, I even mentioned your Pokemon card turn. <laughs> so uh, this is all for entertainment and education purposes only. And for YouTube folks, you know, I'm not giving you these alerts about, hey, it's going to roll over because I have to reserve that for the Patreon community. But now that the move has happened, um, at least I would be, you know, I, I, I hopefully that uh, I hope that you found it useful to have some downside targets and y'all just got timified.